<laughs> Welcome kids to another episode of K6UDA Radio. Hey kids, I just got back from Disneyland and you know what? Disneyland is ham friendly. They are. They have their own ham radio 2 meter repeater. This is really cool. It is on 146 940. 146-940. I had to look it up because, hey, I'm not there. I don't remember that crap. Um, but anyway, it is KE6-FUZ. <laughs> I like saying that. Say it fast. F-U-Z. F-U. F-U-Z. I completely forgot to make a show. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I was going to do it from Disneyland, but I just completely forgot. Must have been drunk or something. Next time you go down to Disneyland or you're down in the Anaheim, California area, uh, be sure and pull that repeater up. Real friendly guys. I talked to guys on D-Star over there. Had a great time. And actually some of them saw my show afterwards. Made some comments. That was cool. Hey. Hey guys. <laughs> Radio Sport. Uh, Radio Sport is here, but we're not doing it this week everything just came today so uh, look for that one next week or so oh yeah I got I got this I got, I got this Ooh. ham candy ham candy what is it hello hello is can you hear me now can you hear me is it a new telephone kids no this is the new Sark 110 from Step IR. The newest, latest, greatest antenna analyzer. Whiz bang does all kinds of stuff. We're gonna take a look at this thing today. I always finish things eventually. Just sometimes not today. Remember this thing? Yeah. We're gonna put it to the test and we're gonna and we're gonna use the new Sark 110 to check this bad boy out. So you got a two for one here. What do you say we put our mouse ears on and get busy? <laughs> Here's a sexy little thing that I think everybody really loves in ham radio. It's building and testing antennas. So anyway, hey, there for every way to build an antenna, measure an antenna, test an antenna, feed line or whatever there's a million different tools out there i i've got several of them here i've got my trusty old mfj 259 i have by now you've seen my little uh u kits that thing is nice i like it it's small but hey the guys over at step ir just sent me this little guy this is the new sark 110 and I want to see how does this thing measure up with all the other stuff that I've got out here. Um, oh yeah, and for you old timers, I've got the bird. Mm-hmm. Hey, I haven't been a ham for all that long. About five years now. I, I'm not the brightest tool in the shed. And uh, this thing's going to prove it because this is way smarter than me. Oh yeah. It does things I have no freaking clue how to do, what it does, or anything, but it does some very, very cool stuff right off the bat that I do uh, that I do like about it. Built-in Smith chart. So you could kind of see where the tail end is and how your antenna is is propagating, where it's going, what it's doing, if it's you know doing weird zigzag things, or if it's got a flippy end, this thing knows it and it'll tell you. The biggest drawback to this thing is I gotta put these on to read what's at the top of this thing. There is so much information. It is a tiny, tiny little screen and there is so much information on here. It is like, oh, I would say on a computer screen, probably maybe four or five pitch um, type on here in some spaces. Now, I did find a mode on here that really rocked. 
it was called the field mode and it cleans up so much of this screen here and makes it very very usable let me see if I could find it here real quick I'll go into the mode and into field mode there it is and if you could see that in field mode it does clean it up quite a bit and it gives you a nice kind of a readable deal on there I like that I love the um, let's see let's go back into mode here I'll go right back into mode uh, it gives you a cable test so this this is kind of handy and it really showed me exactly where I had uh, issues where I had splices in my cable about 10 feet out right outside the window here of my shack um, I go from 50 ohm feed line into a into a one-to-one -one ballon and then off into hyperspace with a 450 ohm ladder line that goes up to my uh, my semi-rotatable dipole on the roof and it showed me exactly where that break in that 50 ohm cable was and then it did take the uh, the 450 ohm line and you could see the line going out but honestly I had no clue how to interpret it likewise with the Smith chart I don't know exactly what I'm doing and I guess you know what if I got an education from one of you engineers out there, you would probably tell me enough to make my head explode. And I have no doubt you'd do that. What do I like about it? This is so small and the battery lasts surprisingly a long, long time. So the battery life is nice. It has a lot of functions here that I don't know what they do. So it's hard for me to, to go in and say, yeah, they either work or they don't because I have no idea what the hell they do. It's hard to see outside. It's a nice color screen. When you're in the shade or you're in, inside, this thing is beautiful. It's beautiful colors. It's easy to see the scalar lines going across the screen to see where, you know, where if you've got it wide enough. And that's another really beautiful thing about this is I could pop this out wide enough and it'll tell me in scales, you know, where I'm hitting different bands and you could see, you could see it dipping the, the green scalar line for your SWR at different points. So you could kind of pick them and then you could, you could use the little uh, uh, wheels and navigate right to them. I also like the fact that it's this small to be in a portable bag if I want to strip that down if I want to take my KX3 throw it in a backpack and I need a wire antenna and I'm going to throw that in my backpack along with say my Alex loop and you're going to go hiking for any length of of time uh, even a, even a, as short as an hour you're going to feel the weight and the more you pack the uh the less you're hiking <laughs> the less i'm hiking the more i pack so something like this actually even with my my u kits antenna analyzer uh this weighs almost nothing compared to this and this is tiny but this is packed with electronics and batteries big batteries this is you know more like a little iphone so i like it for that but can't see it in daylight it, it just hard to see in daylight okay here's my iphone and here's this for comparison there they are yep i'll put them right there so where does it go it does 160 meters through 220. so you 220 guys uh you're in luck you um two meter guys you want to plug this thing in in your um, uh, truck or your car and you want to measure your mobile antenna beautiful you can do that so how do you hook the, how do you hook this bad boy up 
it comes with well it comes with this cover here and it also comes with this handy little antenna doodad and that just pushes in and it locks it locks in there pretty good here's the bad thing this little uh, this little connector here goes to an SMA female. So, what are you going to do with this? You got to go buy yourself another connector, and I would re highly recommend something like this with a strain relief on it. Let me undo it here. This is about three feet long with a strain relief SO239 on one end and a uh, SMA on the other end. You could buy that online, uh, eBay for probably five or 10 bucks. I forget exactly, I've had that one for years. But unfortunately, you need to buy that extra piece in order to be able to use this thing. Yeah, why don't we talk about the price? How much is this little guy? These are not cheap. My invoice for this, Comes out to a grand total of $428 as configured here. I don't think I could get it any cheaper um, at, at HRO or, or DX Engineering because I, frankly I don't think they're selling them. To, is it worth $428? If you're a big time soda activator or a de-expedition guy who's doing a lot of backpacking, weight is a big concern and money is not hey uh, this is a great antenna analyzer for me i think it's a bit overkill for my budget but hey if you got the money this is a nice analyzer i think next we're gonna hook a wire up to this one and we're gonna make it work well, remember a couple of weeks ago, Bobby built a Balin. Well, not exactly a Balin, a matching unit. It's a transformer. But Bobby builds a Balin sounds a lot better. Anyway, today I tested this thing and I used a little Sark uh, to do it. So I hung up my piece of wire, hooked everything up, and turned it on. And you know what? Amazingly, it did come in fairly close on almost all of the ham bands. I mean, it was a little bit off, but yeah, it worked pretty good uh, for the real short piece of wire that I had. Uh, speaking of the Sark there, I actually had to put my glasses on to see what was going on there. Uh, it, is, it is tough to see that color screen out in the daylight. I just got to gotta add that anyway it all added up it worked out the SWR wasn't bad it wasn't great had I added a longer wire it would have probably been a lot better but hey for my first build I say not bad and I call it a success I promised you before and I lied I'm not lying this time radio sports showed up and they'll be here next week you don't want to miss this one this one i think is going to decide once and for all who's the better of the two i'm looking for show ideas if you've got an idea make a comment here send me an email do something smoke signals if you've got an idea for a for a segment or a show uh, let me know because I'm always looking for cool ideas and if you've got a cool product or an idea for a great product review something that you think is is pretty cool and that the rest of the ham community is gonna like you know what let me know because I'll get it I'll put something on the air guys if you like my show subscribe uh, like it Share it on Facebook, Twitter, talk about it on ham radio, on your local nets. Tell them, hey, there's this crazy funny guy on YouTube and he's doing all kinds of cool stuff on uh, ham radio, all kinds of ham radio stuff. Subscribe, just sub hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. No, just do it, do it now. Hopefully some of you are learning and hopefully the rest of you are learning how to get a sense of humor. So, guys, I'm out of here. 7-3. Later.